Hey there, welcome back to Lima Bean Living. If you guys are new here, my name is Emily, and in today's video, I will be bringing you along as I make this little patriotic cake. I actually had some other plans for this cake, and I will be sharing my successes in this cake decorating as well as some of my failures. So stick around to find out how we make the cake, the chocolate frosting that was in the middle, as well as the vanilla buttercream, and all the decorations as well. So I'm starting off by baking the chocolate cake that I have shared a number of times on my channel. I don't think I will be straying away from this recipe anytime soon. It is very moist, it's very delicious, very rich, and it's so good that I'm actually making a quadruple batch in this video. I kind of figured I will make a bunch of cake rounds as well as some cupcakes and then just freeze them so that whenever I need a cake layer, I got it. So that is why I'm making so much here, but I will make sure to list all the ingredients for a single batch down below in the description box. So once the cakes were packaged up, I threw them in the freezer and then I prepared the chocolate ganache and I did this the day before decorating. You just need equal parts, chocolate chips and heavy whipping cream. And I've had more success with like chocolate, like semi-sweet or milk chocolate compared to white chocolate. I'm still trying to master that. But after a few rounds in the microwave at about 30 seconds, this melted nicely and uh, was well incorporated with my mixing. Then I covered it with some saran wrap and threw it in the fridge for the next day. And we'll grow in number, So the day that I decided to decorate is when I made my buttercream because I really didn't want to have to deal with freezing it or refrigerating it and then getting it back down to a good temperature. So I did have some temperature issues anyways later on, but this recipe I've also shared in the past and I will put this down below in the description box as well. One of the tricks to getting a very nice and light buttercream is to whip your butter for at least five minutes, getting it nice and light and fluffy. And then it's time to add the powdered sugar, the vanilla, and any other flavorings that you might want, like cocoa powder or something like that. I use this little technique where I use the attachments for the KitchenAid, but also covered it with a kitchen towel just to kind of keep all of the powdered sugar from flying everywhere <laughs> while it was mixing. And then about halfway, I added in the vanilla. And here I'm doing a triple batch. So again, single batch down below in the description box. But once the vanilla was incorporated, I continued to add the rest of the powdered sugar, as well as a little bit of heavy whipping cream.
Once that was all nice and whipped, I did add just a very small amount of purple food coloring, and this is actually to help the frosting become even more white. So that is a little trick that I've learned online. <laughs> then it was time to make my whipped chocolate ganache. So this is the ganache that I prepared the night before. It was in the fridge, and it was, you know, soft to the touch. It wasn't super firm. And so I decided to whip that up with a hand mixer just to incorporate a bunch of air. And it did turn out like a chocolate frosting. I did notice though that there were little bits of the chocolate that probably weren't fully melted. And so I would prefer to make a chocolate buttercream frosting in the future, but I ran out of cocoa powder. So I, this was kind of my backup plan. So it was a new technique and it worked out but I don't know if I would do it again. I think I'd just rather make a chocolate buttercream. So I do wanna note that as I'm assembling the cake here, my original plan was to make a chocolate buttercream, not this chocolate ganache that's whipped, uh, and then also fill each layer with some chocolate ganache, obviously, again, that wasn't whipped, so it would be a little bit more fudgy. And since I decided to make the chocolate frosting from the chocolate ganache, I figured that would be, you know, fine just to have in each layer and I just put a nice thick layer in between. I did want to use three of my cake rounds here and here I'm just using up the rest of the ganache to kind of smooth out the sides and then it was time to throw that in the freezer to really firm up and work on coloring my frosting. I find it hard to come in, but you don't even try. Still I'm better with them without you Now I want to note my frosting was a little soupy, which means that it was too warm. So I did throw my bowls of frosting when I colored them into the fridge, let them firm up a bit and then whipped it again. And it turned out to be like the best perfect consistency. So if your frosting is soupy, that means it's too warm. If it starts to like curdle, it's actually too cold. And that is something I've shared my experiences in the past with Aubrey's birthday cake. So just keep that in mind. Um, it was very warm that day. And so obviously, you know, the buttercream was kind of like melty in my kitchen. So I had many trips from the cake decorating area to the fridge and back again to try to keep this frosting like the perfect temperature. But that was a little stressful for me. It would have been nice if it was just nice and cool all the way through, but that wasn't the case. Then I decided to take my cake out of the freezer and do a crumb coat with the white vanilla frosting and just smoothed out the sides, tried to get it the shape that I was really hoping that it would stay. And back in the freezer, the cake went to really firm up. Once that was nice and cold, I brought it back out, filled piping bags with both white and red buttercream, and then piped on like two little layers of each color. Uh, so like, you know, two times around with the white, two times around with the red and so on until it went all the way up to the top of the cake. And then I used a like straight spatula to kind of smooth out the edges. And anywhere where I kind of felt like it needed a little more white or a little bit more red, I added that on with my piping bag and smoothed it out again. I do want to note that there is a better technique for actually getting like perfect stripes all the way around, but I do not have this kind of like, I don't know, rag the edge, uh, like, I don't know how to describe it. It's kind of like a zigzag, but squared off scraper. And you would do like white, and then scrape, use the scraper and it creates like the little ridges, let it freeze, add the red and then scrape it away. But 
I'm working with what I got and really anyone can do this technique to get something that resembles a stripe. And then with the top of the cake is actually where I struggled the most and I'll go into my failures later on but my original plan was to have like a nice blue drip down the sides and that just completely failed. So I went with just icing the top blue with blue buttercream and doing some red, white, and blue swirls on top. And so the technique on how to do this is to put your colors in a row on some saran wrap and then roll it up and insert this tube of frosting into a piping bag. And then you just pipe away. You have your little three color swirl or rainbow swirl or whatever colors that you're using. And I just did uh, eight bigger like dollops on top and then filled in the spaces between each one with just a smaller little dollop of frosting. So this wasn't the perfect cake. There's definitely areas where it looked, you know, definitely homemade. But I think it turned out pretty well, especially since this was my first time trying stripes and doing a three color swirl on the top. Like I said, the chocolate frosting was okay. I, I'm going to make a chocolate buttercream in the future, but everyone really loved this cake. And I think I'll definitely be making some version of it again in the future. So let's go ahead and talk about my fails. So I wanted again to do a blue drip. And I figured I've seen people use these melting chocolates and I would just melt it and then color it and drip it on the top of my cake. But as soon as I added in this food coloring, and it makes me sad rewatching it because that was a lot of food coloring that is wasted now. As soon as I added in that food coloring, this um, chocolate mixture just kind of seized up and became very firm. And I'm like, okay, well, there's no way this is going to drip down the side of my cake. And I tried adding in like some melted frosting and that didn't work. And I was just getting so frustrated and upset that this was completely failing. So then I decided to give it one more try. I decided maybe the food coloring is the issue. Let's try to do a drip down the side with just white melting chocolates. And I made it like nice and hot and melty, poured it on the top and tried to smooth it out. And the top smoothed out fine, but the drips just like totally melted the buttercream and destroyed it almost so I had to scrape down the cake even more and kind of mess up some of my frosting there so that was a bust so I scraped off the hardened chocolate off the sides left it on the top because I just didn't want to deal with that and that's when I topped it with the blue frosting so you know I it was definitely a learning experience after my many failures, I realized that there are recipes out there that include heavy whipping cream with the melting chocolates, and that's how you get it to be a drip cake. So I will try it again in the future. I'm, I was very disappointed as I was working on this. I was so angry that I kind of didn't even enjoy decorating this cake at some points. So Anyways, learn from my mistakes. Don't just put melting chocolate for drips. There's a ratio that you want to look up for mixing the melting chocolates with some heavy whipping cream to get the perfect consistency. Again, I will try it in the future and hopefully share my success story with you then. But anyways, because of all of these little failures to try to get this blue drip on my cake, uh, that is why on my Instagram, if you guys follow me there, I put, well, I tried. I did try. It wasn't living up to any of my expectations, but you know what? It tasted great. Everyone was happy and you know, overall, it doesn't really look that bad, but it just didn't live up to my expectations. And if any of you guys are perfectionists, you kind of probably can relate to that feeling. So I hope that even with my failures, you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. And remember, the recipes are down below in the description box if you want to recreate any of these elements. And I will catch you guys in the next one. to the end of the video. If you didn't know already, every Monday and Friday you can find motherhood and lifestyle content on this channel. And since us moms have to do it all, 
That may mean yummy recipes, easy DIYs, mom hacks, cleaning and organization, or just a combo of everything. Please know that you are loved and you are made for greatness, and I will catch you in the next one.